people like going on the re rehabilitation project for us, which is hard labor for several years. So you can't do anything. So you're pushed immediately to get married. As soon as you start any kind of relationship, you're told you better get married before you get in trouble. You have to get married, you have to get married. So um, in like December... Did, didn't someone like see you in the hallway kissing him and they said, get married? Or yeah. Something. You better get married. You yeah. better get married now. So why, why is it like that, do you think? They have the idea, they have policies on it, that the whole area of like relationships and sex is very messed up, is very aberrated, they call it, and that people aren't responsible enough to deal with it. And they don't want to look bad as a church, mm. having people having sex. I mean, I can understand, I was 14, I shouldn't have been doing anything anyway. So if they had a rule that the minors can't do that or something, that's a great rule, you know, the minors should not be going around having sex but it was for everybody. And it also was like nothing more than kissing, so you weren't allowed to, allowed to experiment, you weren't allowed to grow up, you weren't allowed to do anything. If you wanted to like do anything, you had to get married first. Mm -hmm. So that's also ridiculous. The policy states, that Alan Hubbard supposedly wrote, states that it's for public relations reasons, that no one can do anything until they get married. So a month after I turned 15, I was off to Vegas and got married. So I had no 15. choice, yeah. And also, before you get married, you have to live in a room with other people. I was in a room that was maybe eight by ten feet, maybe eight by twelve feet, with six people. That was where we lived. We had three oh. bunk beds. We had three bunk beds here, three bunk beds here, and a dresser in the middle. That's all that fit, and then a dresser over here, and that's all that fit in the room. And it didn't have a bathroom. We had to go to like the main shower hall and take a shower. So that's horrible. If you get married, you have to wait, and then you get your own room. So that's like a luxury, your own room. So it's another reason to get married. So, um, so a month after I turned 15, I was married, and my husband was 22. And um, then I got transferred to another job, which was called the Master at Arms. And that's the person who is in charge of ethics. That's called an ethics officer. Yeah, an ethics officer, like enforcing ethics on people, like assigning people lower conditions, making them do amends, um, doing inspections, finding the bad people in the organization, etc. And was this in the International Training Org mm -hmm. still? Mm -hmm. And also, the International Training Org trained people in Scientology's administrative technology from the lower organizations. So I was also responsible for all the uh, students. Uh -huh. When I, because then I got promoted to the person who was over that entire department of like security and ethics for the staff and the students. And what's that called? That's called the director of inspections and reports. So um, my first, my very first job, my very first assignment when I came onto that job was there was a man who was about 40 years old. He was a staff member. His wife had been sent to uh, Florida. She'd been gone for a year or two on training. And he hadn't seen her, and he had admitted that he had masturbated or been masturbating. And how, where did that come up? How, he how admitted, did that information he, come up? He got in trouble for something and he admitted it, or he was getting a confessional and admitted it. That's how it comes up. And um, so I was 15, and he came to the office, and I had to handle him. So it's like the first day, I think, or the second day I started working on this job, and I had to tell him that he couldn't masturbate. I had to have him read a policy where L. Ron Hubbard says masturbating is bad, and I had to get him to figure out how not to masturbate. And you're 15 years old. Yeah, I'm 15. I was so embarrassed. I didn't even know what I was doing, and I'm telling this 40-year-old man to not masturbate, and it was the most embarrassing thing in the world. No one's allowed to masturbate. Masturbating is a big issue. You get in big trouble. You won't get promoted. No masturbating. You know, even if your wife's gone or, or you're a young kid or anything, no masturbation is allowed. It's really frowned upon. You're considered aberrated. You're considered, like, messed up if you masturbate. And this is in policy by Hubbard? Yeah. In books, too? Yeah, he says um, masturbation is bad because it stimulates sexual pictures. I never really understood what that meant, but it was really bad. Whatever. Yeah, it was a really bad thing to do. So that was always a big issue, and I had to handle plenty of people for that over, you know, the period of working there, but that was the first one. And then I had to handle a girl who wanted to leave to convince her to stay. Um, 
I had to handle a lot of people for a lot of things, but some of the main things were um, staff members who wanted to leave. It was a big issue. If How did you convince them to stay? Just get them to realize that they were wrong, you know, have them read policies where it says, if you leave the Sea Org, you're a degraded being, you know, and um, the only, these are policies all around has written, if you leave the Sea Org, you're a degraded being. The only reason you leave is because of your own withholds and the, your own crimes. And you'd wear people down. You have to get them to go into confessionals and admit what they've done, read policies saying that they're wrong, tell them, yell at them. Um, as soon as you say you want to leave, you're put on to hard labor. You're not allowed to leave until you've got permission. It takes six months to a year. And they're just worn down over time. Cause, and all the staff sneer at you. You're referred to as a degraded being. How did you personally feel about it? If I wanted you and said they wanted to leave. I wanted more than anything to say, by all means, go. Take me with you. <laughs> Why didn't you? Because uh -huh. I get in such big trouble. Because if I just up and left, my family would never speak to me again. My mom, my grandma, my brother. So I wasn't about to do that. If I sided with them and said, go ahead and leave, they wouldn't be able to leave. And I'd be in big trouble. You know, I'd be in ethics. I'd, you know, I'd You'd be, be doing hard labor. It's very hard to describe, but it's... You're like in constant fear of people finding out about what you're thinking. Of people like knowing that you know, knowing that you've done something wrong, and you don't want anyone. You're just in fear all the time of people finding out about you, of th people finding out the thoughts you've had. If you think about leaving, then you have to withhold that forever. And if you tell them, then you're in big trouble. And so, how did you deal with having all these thoughts that? You didn't want anybody to know. What well, I did get to the point where I wanted to, I just wanted to kill myself. Because I, I just, I was so, I felt I was so trapped. I couldn't leave. I couldn't possibly leave. And I couldn't stand to stay. 